Hello, and welcome to the Old Farm Bus Podcast. This is the back of the bus session. Hello, and welcome to the Old Farm Bus Back of the Bus Sessions Podcast. I've done two podcasts today. I'm knackered, but I'm ready for this one because I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Is it? He let me down yesterday. I was ready all day. I was waiting all week. I was like, he's coming. I'm ready for this one. I'm ready. And then you said, I've, I've got to reschedule. And it broke my heart, mate. It broke my heart. Typical millennial, mate. Yeah. We just, we just drop, drop I it do, at a moment's notice. I do what I want. I'm a creative. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> today I've got a guy who's in, a, are you in a few bands? Uh, I'm in one band. I think I've seen one you in band, a couple. And then I do like solo stuff. Beautiful. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a musician on here. Is in bands. Is a filmmaker. I think you've got your fingers in a few pies, man. So I want to get into Fair that bit. with you. Yeah. So, talk about. ladies and gentlemen, I love it when I do this because I expect a big applause. I want to press a button. Everyone's <laughs> like, "Woo!" Balloon drops down, but it doesn't happen. So get ready for this. Not to worry. Matt Turner. Whee. Yeah. We'll do it all in post. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God you did it. Yeah, because it always feels really weird for the guests then. They sit there in silence and they're like, like mm. <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> so, Matt, my friend, you were, all, you were pretty much full steam ahead like, when I saw you. You were doing loads of films. Mm. You were doing loads and loads of gigs. Were you pretty much booked out for the end of the year? More or less, I think it was up to like September. That's mm. when I was like pretty much booked up for for like my weddings and you know covers gigs. As a freelancer, that's what you want in it. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you want to yeah. look at your calendar and be like, yeah. yeah, I'm doing all right. It was insane, mate. And then I can't remember when it was. I think the last gig that we did was on Friday the 13th of March. It makes <laughs> of all sense. the dates, and yeah. it was a. Broadway Casino in Birmingham. That was a terrible gig. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What, what Friday, well, Friday, Friday the 13th at yeah. a casino, yeah. for starters. It was <laughs> dead. There was no one there. It was the first time we'd done it, and it was through this new promoter called Matt James, who does, like, he puts on covers gigs for, like, solos and duos around Perfect. Birmingham. Perfect. Really nice to start gigging around Birmingham and getting some like paid work. And yeah, uh, never done a casino before, so I'm thinking, you know, like classic 50s, you know, like the sort of like swing, swing Frank Sinatra. Yeah, so man, like, yeah. Oh, like, oh it'll be really classy, everyone will be done. No, casinos aren't like that, are they? <laughs> I, I don't really frequent casinos that often, Crazy mate. geezers, and I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. There's, We're there's, not in Las Vegas. There's some shifty folk. Yeah. In uh, especially around like Brummy casinos, <laughs> so we're just playing me and my mate Ben because we've got a bit of a duo going. Like, we're just... uh, what's it? T Fast now, isn't it? Well, yeah, well, we've got the Fine Arts Society, T Fast. That's, that's the go. band where we write our own music. Mm-hmm. A lot of people get confused about this, actually. So I need to keep explaining. Yeah, this. please do, man. So, yeah, <laughs> Fine Arts Society is where we write our own music, and that's myself, Ben Marshall, and Rob Liddell on drums, okay. and sometimes Max when uh, Rob can't make it. And when he fancies it. Yeah, we've, we've Again, got a bit of a loose policy on drummers. They come and and a, a loof <laughs> uh, creative. There you go, another yeah. one. Like <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, what you want. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got a uh, Turner Marshall duo. That's me and Ben just basically trying to earn a bit of money. Mm-hmm. So we do like weddings and birthdays mm. and pub gigs, stuff like that. And then I do exactly the same thing as that but on my own there's just Matt Turner music and that's my main that's been my main job now for two years it was two years in April wow yeah it's uh, been, it's so been the, just got, I just need to get into this casino a little bit more because oh, yeah, it yeah. really did make me smile that <laughs> so that was with just you and Matt this one uh, me and Ben me, yeah yeah you're I'm Matt hey I'm Matt because <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I've had Ben on here already so I'm like know, yeah, well, I've yeah. had the whole party it's good that was but <laughs> you and Ben went into this casino you're, you're setting up and you're getting the vibe and you're like, oh dear. Just weird. You know what? when you get a strange vibe off a place? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just a bit like that sort of thing. Like you're looking around and you think, oh, it's just going to be one of them gigs. That's Did they want you there, do you feel? To be fair, people seem to enjoy it in their own way. And by that I mean we got requests shouted at us like oh from, wow. like, across the room like play this it was like <laughs> boys home all oh, right someone is listening like yes. too fair and uh there's a couple of people who came up and said that they enjoyed it so it wasn't overly bad oh, but there was nice. one bloke who came in with his i'm assuming his, his partner this couple and uh, they sat in the restaurant where we were playing which was empty mm-hmm. they had choice of any table it was like a 50 table restaurant area overlooking the casino <laughs> yeah. and uh, they chose to firstly sit right in front of us Mate. and then they audibly complained to the waitress five minutes in that it was too loud and oh, they couldn't hear God them each other sake. Yeah. <laughs> and so then they moved right to the other end of the restaurant and uh, they continued to audibly 
complain. But other than that, wasn't bad. I reflect on that. Uh, I went to a gig. I did a festival of festival days. (laughs) And it was a a festival near the lakes, um, near William Wordsworth's house. And it was beautiful. Like, not getting any better than that for a bit. Yeah, that's epic. Me and Chrissy went down in Herbie's van. We're so lucky to be able to borrow that. And I was so excited for it. And this guy got me in because I did a happiness festival about a month before. I spoke in front of like a thousand people. Mm. And it was my first like massive thing i was yeah. i was terrified to be honest man uh cool though but he come up to me at the end and said oh i'm doing this little festival in the lakes and he's a lovely guy i would love you to come down mm. and it was that sort of archetypal hippie style festival you imagine yeah. to go to and it's beautiful mm. but there was one guy that just has to ruin it for everybody i Always mean is, isn't if they? this bus is full of a hundred people ten people one of them's going to probably be a knob. You know it. You, you, <laughs> you, uh, uh, if you select it, you'll be yeah. all right. But if 10 people are going to walk in here on their own accord, we can guess that one person might be a bit of a knob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this Very was the true, case right? at this festival. He was like really yeah. over drunk and it was probably 10 o'clock, half 10. Yeah. You've got the poetry on, then the music's going to come on, then the bands. We're talking PM or AM, sorry. AM, like AM. morning. Wow. Yeah, he got he was wasted. Song. So he must have maybe just gone out through the night. I don't know how he'd got to that stage, <laughs> but he was smashed. Yeah, and, right. <laughs> and I was just on doing my poem and people had really nicely like come close to sit. Mm. And he just sat in the, here, like in the corner. And he didn't want to be there and he didn't have to be there. There's a festival, so much going on. And he's just, he's literally going, boo, poetry, boo. Oh, you're and I'm halfway well, through a really nice. intense poem, like yeah. uh, how do you deal Knife with Crime. How, and how'd you handle that? Me, because uh, he was then started talking to other people in front of me and I'm performing. And I just performed through, but. Mm. The Ripley boy in me, <laughs> which I have got, like people don't expect, but I used, to, every now and I again, used like. to be in boxing and I used to do these things and I'm not, I fought him with my words, but I sort of stared him down. Yeah. And then also I, when I finished my poem, I just said, listen, mate, you don't have to be here. Everybody else is enjoying it. It seems mm. everybody's conscious enough at the minute to be able to go if they want will you please go? And everyone cheered. Yeah, man. <laughs> he literally like, was like, yeah. yeah and he, he kicked out. He went. Um, he had a bit of a go at me. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And then buggered off. His, his ego was hurt, mate. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it was quite nice to be able to yeah. say, but obviously when you're in an establishment, you can't go, we'll go off and bugger and love some dinner <laughs> else. <laughs> to put it politely. Yeah. <laughs> no, we do get that all the time though, man. Like doing pub gigs especially. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, busy sort of like... You know, Saturday night, centre of town, really, really busy establishments and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You're playing, like me and Ben play really upbeat music. We just can't play chilled out music. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's like just the, the music that we're into or the way that our performing style, but people always end up just getting up and just having a proper dance. Yeah, it always yeah. just gets out of hand, yeah. like, especially when it's like a heavy bank holiday weekend. You're getting there. me excited now, man. <laughs> I'm ready to do it. It's your energy that you bring. Yeah. But yeah, like, we've had exactly the same thing as you, pretty much. Well, like, essentially performing, and people have just had a bit too much. Mm. Like, a bit like that guy that you were talking about, when people just don't know what the limit is, and they just don't know how, like, out there their actions are. And um, people just, like, they're dancing, enjoying it, but they've just got no spatial awareness. Mm. And, like, we're playing, like, (laughs) we're playing quite cosy places, and there's, like, not much room to, like, swing a cat, let alone have a bit of a dance. (laughs) And um, <laughs> and like this guy just kept on like crashing in, like losing his balance and crashing into us and like knocking our mic stands, nearly mm. losing teeth. Oh, mate, because like, that, that really hurts, doesn't it? My Awful. friend Molly, who's in Unknown Era, yeah. uh, has got half a tooth from doing that. So. Wow. Go show Shure SM58s, microphones. They're built, <laughs> they are hardy mics. Hard and it goes to show when someone bumps into your mic. Yeah, stand, it'll take your teeth and it out. It smashes you in the teeth. And yeah, they did it like four times. Mm. And I remember getting really, really annoyed and generally just like stopping the song on like four separate occasions. Just being like, look, if you're going to keep knocking into us, then we're just going to stop. Yeah, and we're just yeah. going to like stop playing, going to ruin it for everyone. Mm. And they had no idea what was going on. They're like turning around going like, why is the music stopped? Like, oh, my go on, life. keep playing, carry on, carry oh, on. Oh, mate. Genuinely no idea. And then, yeah, finally the bouncers step in. Did they? And, like, help you out. But it was really funny because we were playing that one by Drake. that goes like, just hold on, we're going home. Yeah. We're playing that as he got dragged out. <laughs> yeah. 
and literally just like changed the words like just so no you're going over <laughs> everyone just started singing it things just fit yeah, yeah it just fit perfectly everyone started singing it everyone jumps up and it was just like went from an awful night to like a brilliant night then. you know amazing. what I mean like you yeah. remove them like awful people who are ruining for everyone who yeah. you are as people or artists um, to be able to be calm and like do what you did because mm. I've, I've been to play and they're ready to fight straight up and yeah. they're just like what wow, i'm doing my art why aren't you respecting me and mm. just ready to go and it's like oh yeah but be be conscious of who they are and what mm. they're doing there they're, they're ready to get drunk and have a night out and they want some music played so yeah they need to know boundaries but you handled that perfectly and brilliantly in my mm. eyes because i have seen it twist and turn and yeah it ruins the night for everybody yeah. then as soon as you're like straight up fiery and they're straight up fiery no nobody's in the vibe then yeah like, oh, you don't want to escalate to the point where it gets out of hand yeah, yeah. like you need to be fair bit rock you? star at times though <laughs> <laughs> exactly like you need, you need to sort of like control it just the best way you can like you can either meet them with full-on like the amount of respect that they're showing you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which like you feel like you should do at the time mm. you'd rather just like just kick out at them or something but really like you end up the better person if you can just like control the situation does it help when you're with your band then to keep that about you because have you you had it on your own as solo artists and it's interesting that you've been solo and band because i've only ever been solo Mm, mm. quite envious to be honest because i love like in football i've always i've don't play football anymore but you know when you score a goal or something and all your mates come up and hugging you want to celebrate with your camaraderie yeah. and you're all together it's yeah. the best feeling ever not just that with the band it's uh you got like an added confidence as well mm. like you've got the band to fall back on so yeah. if you are playing your instrument or whatever or you sing it and you either forget the words or you make a mistake play a bum note mm. a lot of it you know what i mean like mm. your band notices and they mm. give you some stick for it yeah yeah but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's not too bad. Whereas if, if your bottom falls out when you're solo, yeah. it's just you. So 100%. That's what I found. I always started off playing in bands, and then I progressed to start, you know, doing mm. solo stuff. And I found it really, really... I, I considered myself a pretty, you know, confident seasoned, musician. Yeah, yeah seasoned yeah. musician. Then I started doing solo stuff. I was like, this is really New level. hard on your own. So fair play to you for going straight in, that's doing stuff on your own. Bless, and man. And thank you for that. And... There was so much I've learned from doing it, you know, and I try not to beat myself up all the time now because before, mm. as the artist, when you do something, you, you've you not performed a line right and you're just in your head and constantly you're like, I could have done that better, could have done that better. Mm. I suppose it is nice to have your mates there say, come on, just get over it. You've yeah, played that you note, good. whatever. Yeah. When you've finished a set, you go inside yourself a bit and you can be like, mm. oh, no, everybody noticed. Everyone knew yeah. I'd done something wrong. So I've had to really learn to be yeah be nicer to myself and be yeah, be more yeah. honest with myself uh, my whole um uh, steps towards performing and being a performer has changed as well over time like i used to love it i wrote a song the other day and i say that i've said this line before so if you're listening in a lot thank <laughs> you but you wouldn't know, know this line but i wrote um I used to perform every night, every day, but after I purged what I needed to say, I recluse back home where I wanted to be. I'm fighting from the back. I don't need to be seen to be heard. And that, it was one of them I lyrics like I wrote, and yeah. I was really happy with it because I needed to be out there all the time, and I wanted to be on a stage and have their moments shared. But after, for a poet anyway, or a spoken word artist, to constantly go, pour your soul, uh, pour your soul out. That's mm. the right way of saying it. And heart and soul. Heart yeah. and soul, like, really give yourself... For me, I told all the stories I needed to tell. I'd perform where I needed to perform. And I've now got to that level where I'm like, oh, it's just nice to go and just enjoy it. Not go to a night and think, oh, shit, I'm on soon or that. Yeah, man. Just be around people and vibes and feeling that. Yeah, you get comfortable in it, definitely. 100%. But no, like going back to what you were saying about beating yourself up when you make Mm. a mistake, like it can be a good thing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you improve from that. Growing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, like, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, if you um, if you mess up something that's, like, genuinely, really, like, noticeable, people yeah, be like, yeah. oh, he was doing really well until, like, you know, he did that. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> happen often, but, like, you people know... People barely ever it notice It even happens well. to, like, the best, the best artists, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you just have your off days. And, exactly. Like, and I like what you're well. saying there. Like, again, you can 
batter yourself or mm. just like talk to yourself and it's how yeah. you go about that like I just think, say well don't do it again but like yeah, exactly. we'll work on it yeah be I conscious of that the main thing is just yeah making sure that each time you go out try and do a little bit better than last time and you you're gonna be destined for greatness aren't you like if you're always improving <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you're doing man that's what you're oh, on this you. constant avenue Cheers, man. what are some of like the the best feelings after a gig or the best gigs you've had where you're like oh this is beautiful and then after that you go on to like the worst suckers mm. <laughs> the painful experiences best gigs by far mm-hmm. um you know being in a band and like playing our own music and also earning money off playing covers tunes mm-hmm. best mm-hmm. gigs by far are the ones where you're playing your own stuff mm. and people really dig it mm. and they're not even necessarily the most busy gigs like mm. y- you could be playing to like a crowd of like 10 people can i can say my on... favorite time i've seen you perform was at oh, yeah. Ben Mark Smith's night. Oh, songwriter sessions. Oh, yeah, mate. Uh, I, City Arts in Nottingham. You took me on a journey, man. You took me on a full journey. And nice I, one. I loved how Ben composed the night together and what he put together. Mm. But I also loved your dynamic. I said to Ben before, like the dynamic you share on stage. Yeah, that was just me and Ben. And uh, we were essentially and, just... And it just vibe, yeah. man. And the, the, then you hit me at the end with the song. And it, mm. what's it called? Footsteps. Uh, uh, footprints. Footprints. Footprints, yeah, cool. yeah. So already I'd had a laugh. You'd uh, had a good conversation. You, you share yourself uh, really openly on stage and have talk about yourselves perfectly. And it's funny and it's engaging. Mm. Then you play a great song. And then at the end, you hit me with that really emotional song. I was just like, fucking hell. <laughs> like, it That's really got man. me, man. Appreciate so that. That, just throwing that in there, mm. it was one of my favourite experiences of you guys on stage. Cheers, man. For the benefit of the audience, anyone watching, we should say that Ben Mark Smith songwriter sessions. Yeah, hundred percent. Hopefully, we'll be starting again very soon. As soon as we're all out of lockdown, he's coming on this podcast oh, is he? In, this week. Brilliant. Yeah, so oh, I'm getting him on to have it. it. Yeah, yeah, I'll give him his platform. Don't you? Absolutely. This is your time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that guy. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say, man? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the gigs you've done and mm. so, good, yeah. bad. <laughs> Where were we? Um, yeah, uh, like best gigs, probably one of the best gigs we've ever done was supporting our mate, Herbie, as his band Super yeah, Furniture, Super when they Furniture. played uh, Rescue Rooms. Amazing. When was that? Wow. It must have been about a year and a half ago, probably. I can't remember what exactly when it was now. I think it was for the new EP launch, um, the one with Do You, uh, you know, the one with the brass section. Yeah. 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 Um, I, th- I think it was their like EP launch and it was really cool. It was like packed out really done they, they, they've they got a big audience together haven't they yeah super absolutely. furniture really popular band i can see why as well. i'm a big oh, fan totally they're ele- they've got everything again yeah. all the dynamics in yeah. the right places uh, <laughs> first super furniture gig i ever went to was it that one i think it probably was and i'd never seen a crowd like it mm. for like a local band yeah you know what i mean yeah uh, it's unreal like just all young kids they're all jumping around <laughs> all moshing yeah. i was like jesus it's like being a you know um whatever like your, your favorite like touring american artists like, and the you know best I mean? thing like, i met <laughs> herbie really through a completely different purpose through filmmaking and so on yeah, yeah and to meet somebody so calm on this like beautiful like relaxed level mm. and then you're like yeah do you like music like, I'm like yeah quite do yeah i'm in a band actually really humble about it i'm like what's your band and i look oh, at him yeah. and i'm like mm-hmm. you're crazy man <laughs> <laughs> you're out there like proper cool like oh yeah mosh pitters and that <laughs> awesome yeah big shout out to super furniture huge mm. fan of them but yeah um that 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 was probably one of the best gigs we've done mm-hmm. uh, alongside we hosted our own stage at oh what was the festival called I've got now one of the big Nottingham festivals. Should really know this. Anyway, we had our Splendor? own. Splendor? No, it wasn't Splendor. One of the one of the, one of the multiple venue ones. Oh, uh, Hockley Hustle. Was it Hockley? It's Hustle? on like the line of Hockley Hustle. I think it might have been. I really. I know what you mean. This. though. they put them like fourteen venues, don't yeah. they? And then they've got a, a gig in each venue yeah, for the day. Yeah. yeah I have that's... no idea why I've forgotten this. <laughs> I, I literally did loads of like charity. Oh, beat the streets. For it. Beat the streets. Yes, I knew Thank we'd get there, so man. Much. I knew we'd get there. <laughs> yeah. Um. I even helped do loads of the charity videos mm, for mm. him, like um for some of the charities. And um, yeah, we host our own stage there, and that was something pretty cool because like we we put ourselves on it, like you know. Second last slot, yeah. Like, you, you get certain Just before Blink One Eight Two. Yeah, the pin-up stage that was really cool, and uh, 
it wasn't a massive venue, but we had like a, quite a lot of people come down to see us. Your mates turn up and family. Yeah, mm. yeah, totally. And that was just really cool um, because I've been doing a lot of like rubbish cover gigs in the lead up to it, playing to no one, can, not really any response. Can you try and describe that feeling or decipher that feeling you get when a gig with a band is going incredible and mm. that feeling you get after? Because it's something mm. I, w- I will probably never actually experience with no, 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 I don't think I'm going in any bands anytime soon <laughs> but yeah to that exp- extent where because first of all I think music's an other energy mm. I think you're putting people in this like beautiful state everybody's just creating a vibe mm. a beautiful atmosphere whatever that is I don't know how to what to call it but it's just something other you're creating it you're feeling it and you're looking at your mates and they're all in on it, mm. it I look at it with so much envy, but like beautiful yeah. envy, like good on you lads, nice It's unreal. Work. Like yeah. when a gig's going really well and like thinking back to the few that we've done, with you know, that have been absolutely mint and up there, you're absolutely buzzing off it. You know, there's, you're just in that moment, you're focused on mm, it and mm. you're, you're halfway between like, I'm really enjoying this, this is amazing. And also don't mess this up <laughs> and you're focusing even harder yeah, on making yeah. sure that your parts and like sometimes like you just get that confidence and it makes mm. it a lot easier so mm. you don't have to focus that much on like going wrong because you've just got all of a sudden got this confidence and you you know trying things that you wouldn't usually like oh, twiddle here and there it's behind like, the back <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean playing with the team yeah. I cannot do any of that just like that. that's Ben's department <laughs> totally but yeah um, it, it's just a mixture of like pure elation mm. uh, of just like you know playing your music and people singing it back to you that's mm. that, that's that's the biggie mm. the, the first time you, you, n- you never forget the first time you play a song and you just catch eyes with someone even if it's just one person mm. in the crowd and they're singing your lyrics it's usually ben's girlfriend lara <laughs> 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 in fact i think it was ben's girlfriend lara who like learned our lyrics first out of anyone to be honest <laughs> oh, in fact no that's probably not fair like they must be like ben's brother or something like that anyway <laughs> I, I can already hear them kicking off yeah like, oh, it was me hang like, on a minute Uncle i'm Trev, doing that. Yeah. not seen for like <laughs> 10 years i was with you from the beginning yeah. um, <laughs> you changed man you changed <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, I think that's 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 the best way to sum it up, and it just flies by. Mm. To be honest, when mm. it's like going really well, it's it's just over like mm. that because you like you enjoy it so much. You know the old saying: "Time flies when you're having yeah, fun." Yeah, yeah. Genuinely, it it goes by, and then you're in like a weird sort of state afterwards because usually, like, especially when you're playing the small venues and you like local bands mm-hmm. like us. You finish, and then there's no like glamorous exit of stage to go to the dressing room, mm-hmm. and then like you mm-hmm. see everyone in the VIP party <laughs> yeah. afterwards. There's none of that. You're there wrapping your leads up on, yeah. on stage because you're trying to clear off for the next band who are literally sat there because you've gone like Get five off, minutes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're all there with it, like, oh, you did really good, by the way, mate. Yeah, really good. I really like that song. I forgot what it's called, but yeah, it's really <laughs> good. Like, and like you're trying to get it out of the way, you know, get your stuff out of the way, and then you keep on bumping into people, and they're like, that was amazing. That was really good. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, thank you so much, thank you. And it's like almost overwhelming yeah, then, yeah. because like you, you, I don't know, you're just in like this state of euphoria, mm, and before mm. you know it, it's all sort of like calmed down a bit, and you're just watching the next band, and you're like, wow, that was. I yeah, said you. I really said. Good. I said you'd never get. I'd never get there. But I think you just give it me for a minute. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah. Right. You had a cup up and you're with the lads, and I'm. I'm with you now. I'm like, yes. Yeah, like, it feels unreal, great. Right? <laughs> That's. It's, there's, there's. There's nothing like it. It's. It's the reason why you write your own music mm, by mm. far. The reason why you write your own stuff um, because part of you is writing it for yourself. Yeah. It's a. Um, it's a way of expressing yourself. Mm-hmm. But. As soon as you put it out there, um, it's not yours anymore. It's it's other people's. Yeah. And yeah. people, even with spoken word, like people have their own interpretation. Yeah, they'll like perceive they listen it to in their way, and they perceive it in their way. Like yeah. I say. So I think that's another great thing about it as well. Like mm. any kind of art form is just putting it out there and letting just, them have their own experience yeah, with just, it. Yeah, mm. seeing where it goes, and then it's amazing hearing the stories that you know when people come up to you like, "Oh, I love the, I love this particular line," or they start asking you mm, about yeah, particular yeah. lines. They start saying, you know, like, "Oh, what does this, what does this line mean here?" Mm. Where you say this, this, and that. What are you talking about there? And then mm. you have to think like, "Oh God, I need to make up something." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it because it rhymed. Yeah, it just yeah. sounded good. Like, yeah. I saw it on rhyme and dictionary and went, "Oh, yeah." Now works. we're fixing it together. Yeah, but then you have to say like, "Oh no." It's 
I loved it in um it was like a naughty boys school <laughs> I went to like a work in a pru so pupil referral unit oh, did you? they all get sent to I've been to quite a lot now uh, right. and I performed this poem and I <laughs> it's quite a funny anecdote really because I was just like um we're paying too much money for something that grows out of the ground. Mm. Meaning a lot of things. And I love this lad come up to me and he's like, I loved it when you were on about weed then. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it never entered my mind, but True he perceived though. it in could his own anything. way. And could, just be yeah. could be corn. Could be barley. Yeah. Right. Could be in anything. my way, like, thinking of it then, I was just like, yeah capitalist society man like yeah. thinking of like we could grow these foods and i, I, I wrote it a long time ago oh, yeah, so yeah. it was a different side of myself my more like your russell brand my era. russell brand era true we've all been there yeah i watched one episode of the truth yeah. and that was it mate i know <laughs> i know, I know the truth yeah. Right? Oh, so man. yeah i wrote um quite a lot after that i've learned a lot since as well and i'm mm. pretty much uh more balanced human being i feel but i think he is as well which is quite nice russell brand i'm refer- oh, yeah, reflecting yeah. to now yeah um yeah he had that bit where he was obviously like anti-voter wasn't he, he was yeah like and that, but it's all or nothing got, isn't and it and then he got wrapped up in the ele- and the next thing you know he was interviewing ed Miliband. yeah yeah room, yeah was yeah, like, yeah. get involved much. in this have you seen his stand-up where he talks about like that I yeah thought, is it messiah complex yeah uh, no or is um, it, has he brought another one out as well as i think it could be messiah complex or I think he touches on it in that, yeah. Because he, d- d- he put, puts a video of it on as well, doesn't he, and while he, like, he's talking about it? Yeah. He just <laughs> analyses himself like, crumbling. Just, <laughs> I love it when he's stuff. just like, listen, everybody, I have no fucking idea what I'm on about half the time. Yeah. I say something and then I think about it later and I go, what the fuck have I just said? And I'm, just, I'm like, respect to that is being really honest. Yeah. And could you imagine being on that? pedestal all the time and being seen and oh, anything mate. you say if we say something daft now i sort of i don't want to be famous nah. purely for that mm, i say mm. some proper stupid stuff yeah like, all the sometimes. time like usually I'm, I'm pretty with it but yeah I, I suppose anyone is really but i say some proper stuff <laughs> to really grow you've got to say stuff you don't think really like if i'm having a conversation and i don't know enough about it the only way I, a number one is listening so yeah. listening's a great tool but you want to say your piece and i'll say stuff with it and i'm like yeah this is what i think x y and z mm. i'll just flip this back on has it gone off there he is yeah it, it, that that one runs forever that one oh why yeah you order no worries we're back <laughs> so again with with learning i'll listen all the time i'll like take on conversations but i'll say stuff that i'm not sure on and then analyse it while I'm saying it even. Mm. I'm sort of like, no, this is what I think. Not quite. And then they'll say a good point. And it's uh, uh, like conversation is an art. There's a massive art form between it. Doing this now for an hour or whatever, it's not natural. You sort of... To, to a degree, I'd say. Because like, it is just a conversation. I've, but definitely. At, at the same time, you're thinking like, oh, I need to like be entertaining. And like, exactly. What, what are people going to respond to rather it, than just what we're It's a different right art now. form. Like, yeah. you, if I went to see my mate Jagger, I'd sit down for a bit and I'd be on my phone as well. And I'd yeah. put it down. And I'm like, oh, mate, do you remember that time? And then we'd stop and mm. I wouldn't be thinking of anything else. Yeah. But you have got to sort of like, there's ways of um putting yourself across and mm. somebody like russell brand or somebody a celebrity has always got to be switched on and thinking how are the public perceiving this yeah, how are the totally. media going to perceive me yeah. how are they going to show me through so i suppose it's hard to really truly be yourself then exactly. like if you're constantly in the public spotlight like that y- mm. you can't truly be yourself because ev- my everyone feeling. finds everything offensive yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 minute, in like... that world now aren't we <laughs> yeah it's so, crazy yeah, that was from that lyric of writing, mm. being in Russell Brand days yeah, where man. he was and, and writing stuff down. But oh, when yeah. that kid took <laughs> that as, uh, are you on about weeds? <laughs> it talks. We can talk about lyrics there, can't we? Because yeah, it, it's absolutely. a beautiful thing that I found myself into. Mm. And I'm so happy I found writing because I say in my podcast before, but always labelled stupid. I, I got kicked out of my schools. Um dyslexic branded labeled but never helped with it never told like mm. if you're dyslexic you could be great in creativity or you yeah. might think differently they I were just like that. i've got a few mates who are dyslexic mm. and they were genuinely like the teachers told their parents like oh it's just stupid yeah it's just stupid that is, it's Awful. genuine though like that people are like no they didn't they can't have said that yeah. i promise you my mum would honestly so hard to believe, right come now. in here now stick up and say one of his teachers said, he's stupid, he shouldn't 
uh, what have you been doing at home? He's come and said he's dyslexic. Showed us that he's not dyslexic. He just mm. doesn't bother trying. And he's all. And she was just sat there shocked, like, yeah, what? You can't say that in front of him, and it yeah. happened. So, but that spurs you on. That that could have gone one of two ways, couldn't it? It could have sent you. You know. Well, what we were saying today, um, me and Zach, who Zach Purdy, who came yeah, on yeah. and did, we're doing a, a separate thing and talking about certain things uh, like anxiety and stuff. Mm. But he, in PE at school, got banned from going to PE. I don't know all the reasons behind it, but he, he didn't get on with the teacher. They had lots of conflict. Right. And now he's a personal trainer and life coach. Amazing. My yeah. English teacher stopped me going there made me feel horrible about myself for a long time mm. now i go and teach poetry in schools and give yeah, creative man. writing so it's what i love about your journey <laughs> like, you literally come from you know like teachers saying like you, you, you ain't nothing you, 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 you don't know nothing, nothing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden yeah you've proved them wrong i love that it's real and i love people being proved wrong mate that is perfect <laughs> that is the nicest feeling in the end i did send a, one of my books off as well in the end to the school i was like oh, what did you really you cheeky gets? brilliant <laughs> You're going to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, mate. Yeah. But when you got into lyrics, has it been through like a t- year 10? Year n- like, where were you uh, start where writing start? lyrics? Uh, we've got to go back a good few years, well over 10 years. Um, I've been playing guitar for a few years and uh, I, I went to the same school as Ben. That's how we mm-hmm. met. Went mm-hmm. to St. Benedict's Catholic oh, School and nice. Performing Arts College as it was known then now I think it's just St. Benedict's I mean Shane Purcell's <laughs> year do you know big Shane Purcell no we were okay. the year below Shane Purcell that, that's no. another, he was my mate from rugby days oh yeah he was <laughs> big lad, terrifying he? playing rugby yeah. days. I was in the rugby team for like one day and that was a terrible <laughs> idea you, know, you make these decisions as a kid don't you You're like I'll me. be decent at rugby look at the size of me God did they sake. put you at wing please like where, where was that no I was scrum off <laughs> Scrum off. I can picture it actually now because, like, elite, you're at the back, you're the mouthy one as well. So, no, genuinely not. I was like the intimidated kid who was like, These lads are all big. Like, this is he was terrifying. a month. Did he go on to do like literally like world's strongest ma- or strongest man competitions for a bit? Yeah. He was in insati- like sensational, yeah. but yeah, everyone was like, yeah. Oh, there's that Shane Purcell, and he, he called me like, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, like, because I, I actually was best friends with him for a mm. few years. And because it was the rugby, I was Derby rugby team, nice. and we just had Sick. we had a really good connection. And then yeah. when people looked at you and you know, <laughs> what are you doing with him? Like, and it's like it's so yeah. nice. He's a lovely guy, but it's just how he's built. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, but no, like going back to it, I think me, me and Ben met in St Benedict's and didn't start performing in a band together until Ben was in college and I was in sixth form. Mm. Oh no, there's a story that Ben, I'm not sure if he's told you already, but Tell. they started the prom band for year 11, so mm. GCSEs, just been so GCSEs, and um, we, we all did music together, and we all asked like, oh, can we play in a ba- can we play some music for prom, like, can we play as a band at yeah. prom, and they're like, yeah, yeah, should, should be fine, like, we didn't want paying, like, the teachers were like, wow, free entertainment, absolutely, yeah. no problem, and it got to like, a week before prom, and we had like, two songs that were like, nailed down, <sighs> And all right, and the rest of them were just awful, <laughs> and my my arse just fell out. And I was like, "Sorry, lads," but and I was meant to be the lead singer as well, so I was meant to be front man. I was like, "I don't want this kind of negativity. Mm-hmm. I, this is going to ruin prom for me because we're going to be awful. <laughs> People are going to like walk away and like hate it because we're going to be playing songs awfully." So I'm out. I'm out. Sorry, lads. Like, it. It, was, it, it was a good idea, I can't but, cope with this. but we we should have tried harder, and I gave up. And uh, tell you what. They went on, they got a new lad in, Jack Lloyd-Jones, theatre kid, very theatrical, very, yeah, very sure. confident singer, and they absolutely smashed it. Did they? Yeah, they absolutely smashed it, and I was right there in the front row, and I was like, go on, lad. should have been me. But Ben has never, to be fair, I was <laughs> like, yeah, a bit shouldn't be me, but I was also a bit like, I don't think it would have gone this way if it was me. It was like my own sort of confidence that was a bit like, yeah. But yeah, they smashed it. <clears throat> and then... Um, yeah, we all left. Uh, I stayed on to go do sixth form. Ben went off to do, I can't remember what it was, at college. But yeah, anyway, by the by. And then uh, him and a couple of other mates started a three-piece called the Fine Art Society, as you know today. I do know. So it, I wasn't yeah. a founding member. Oh, I thought you were. No, no, no. Okay, no, let's get into this. So yeah. they'd been going for probably, I don't know, half a year, something like that. And they'd done a few gigs at the Vic, if mm. you remember the Vic. Still going, I know but the Vic, it's yeah. very different now, Chrissy mate. lived there for a while. Is she really? Yeah, she was oh, no ha- part of it. So, That's yeah. epic. We'll yeah. get on to that later. I used to love the Vic. <laughs> yeah, that was like the first ever gigs that we ever 
have played. And um, yeah, they'd done a few gigs and it was going really well. And uh, they used to practice at Dubrek, I think it was. They had like a, uh, you know, they used to go out once every week and it cost you like however much. And um, to like to practice there. And I think he asked me, yeah, it was around about that time, like, oh, do you fancy, you know, coming and having a jam with us? We mm. need another guitarist. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, sounds good. I later found out it's because I owned a car <laughs> and I needed to be able to transport the gear to gigs. It's always a, it's always a byproduct. Yeah, There's always something absolutely. behind it, an uh, alternative motive. Oh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> ulterior motive. Ulterior, alternative, yeah. two words that are d- two Works different out. things. Yeah, <laughs> same thing. But yeah, like that, that, that was basically the reason. But I didn't mind, to be honest. I was like, no, this is cool. I'm in a band. This is my mm. first ever band. And um, I quite enjoy this. And yeah, um, I didn't start writing lyrics until about a year in. Because um, as TFAS, we've always picked it up and then we've dropped it and picked it up mm-hmm. and dropped it. Because we've always had some other stuff going on. Yeah. We've always been like, oh, I want to go and do that. I look shiny. I'm going to do that. And like, you know, we've sort of like, we've not split up. We've never split up. We've always been like practicing. Just done your own things. Yeah, never been one of those that like, we're going on indefinite hiatus until the near future. Well, I love it when never people have that. to uh, <clears throat> announce it all to each other. Like, I'm nah. going for this. It's like, just allow it to happen and come in and go out and go, yeah. like, like they see. <laughs> There's no, no, no point at this level, mm. to be honest, unless you like genuinely got like a big yeah, following yeah, that are yeah. like, you know, care mm. <laughs> we didn't have that <laughs> so it was like oh there's no point in telling them because there's no one to tell I'm like we're just playing music to like our parents and oh, i, our I did friends. that in my day when i was doing my poetry and i put my uh material on my facebook page whatever mm. and then i was like i need a break from this I'm going to tell all the fans yeah, that yeah. have become my spend, big status picture ages, of so me. I mean, yeah. No, can't get that word in there. Take that out. They'll think about that. <laughs> oh, my, yeah. Rhythmical Mike is no more for uh, the foreseeable. <laughs> now Mike of the rhythm. <laughs> yeah. And you will respond to me in such a manner. Three people. Nice one, Mike. See, <laughs> see in about a week. See in a week, yeah. yeah. When you get bored and you're like, I miss that. I may as well get back into it now. <laughs> no one will remember. It'll be all right. So... <laughs> It was and, um, so you were doing covers. No, for... well, yeah, we were doing a few covers, but mm. it, it was like still mainly writing our own stuff. We'd no. throw a few covers in just yeah. to like entertain the audience, keep people coming. <laughs> but it wasn't your. So they were doing that for the year, and mm. then they got you in. Yeah, I was playing guitar. Then, was but vocal. was there? They were mainly covers for their bit, and then got you in, and you started writing. Um, no, they'd, they'd written they'd a few of their own songs. Their own bits. Yeah, cool. yeah. They can um, do it without you then. Oh, you yeah, heard, yeah, lads. they can. They can, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Ben was the, the main songwriter then. Because I spoke to, be to Ben about it and he says, no, I don't really write or doesn't see himself as a writer. He doesn't now, but he writes some good right. songs, to mm. be honest. Like, Ben's got loads of solo stuff um, written that he needs to record. Ready to come out. Yeah, that, mate. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. um, no, genuinely, like, Ben is a really good writer, but I don't know, I just sort of... Mm took over a bit to be honest was that like, the band's decision or did you say listen yeah. lads I'll, I'll go for this it sort of just happened Naturally. like it carried on for a bit and then two of the lads left a little bit of controversy with how one of the members left i'm <laughs> meaning, looking at you now like <laughs> meaning we, yeah this will make i mean i'll get the views <laughs> basically like yeah mm-hmm. um one lad went mm-hmm. off to do um university and same uh, thing yeah and then the other lad we just sort of like wanted to kick out but we were a bit too scared to do it so we just ignored him and yeah. got another drummer in <laughs> oh really <laughs> which is awful but at the same time like yeah it was just it was the way it, it was happens going. yeah but yeah like and then um it got to the point where we met max who is back now max is like a whimsical incredible mystical character who like goes off traveling and then comes back it's like oh max is back best mate but he like disappears all the time yeah. and then he comes back he's like awesome incredible drummer uh, he joined and we decided we we're going to change from like punk rock start doing some more like indie stuff mm-hmm. and, and at the minute at that point me and ben had both been writing songs so there was some that ben sung and yeah. some that i sung so we basically shared the lead singer spot nice and it was pretty cool to be fair and um but then, like, we sort of, you know, like, well, I'm not sure if we're getting a bit bored, but you know when your kid's, like, you're into something and then you're not... The then... shiny thing again. Yeah, you exactly. Like, what's you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, we decided to, like, change, and I was listening to more indie stuff. I was into, like, Maccabees and um, Young Knives and all sorts of, like, you know, jangly sort of, like, yeah. riffy indie 
happy summery tunes and i was nice, like i want to write nice. bounce like jamie t big okay fan of great T. shout yeah and i was like you know jamie t's uh, like the panic prevention yes album. man Beautiful i was, I was album. wanting to write stuff like that storyteller of awesome. so many levels yeah, yeah yeah love jamie t man big influence of like fine art society mm. especially the early days one of my big influences jamie t yeah yeah mm. really cool but yeah i wanted to start writing more music like that catchy upbeat jumpy stuff rather than like punk okay. rock sort of like you know whatever and um yeah, I think that's the point when we all sat down as a band and we're like, yeah, I want to go in this direction. Mm. And uh, we've been trying to get Max on drums for ages, but he wouldn't have it because he, he was already in like five other bands. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted to play bass, okay. even though he's an incredible drummer. We're like, for God's sake, we've got him in the band, but we just need to get him onto the drums. Talk about someone spinning plates there. <laughs> Tell me about five it. Five bands. Now, yeah. now I need to get into bass and that. Yeah. What a guy. And, and, and his thing was like, I'll play drums if we do indie. Mm. I was like, right, that's it. So that was it. I think that was the point where I started like writing the tunes, and my writing sort of like standpoint, my create my, my creative style then was very straight to the point. Mm. It was very sort of like boys rule, girls drool sort of thing. Like <laughs> you know, just a bit mm -hmm. like in betweeners. Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. any, just imagine like the in betweeners. Like yeah. that's what we were like sort of conveying you know what you're getting. in our songs yeah. sort of thing. And um, bop your head too. You don't yeah. need to put too much of a message out yeah. or force anybody to message. think anything because at that time our lives like i was writing about stuff that we were doing i was mm. writing about my own personal experiences yeah. and our own personal experiences rather than which was going out and just, a yeah, good just, time. just going out having a good Beautiful, time man. and yeah just like little observations on you know various things so, going on at that point in time this is just intersecting slightly just to this point this is why i really like you as a person because hmm. i've spent a lot of my time as you know, like deep thinking, reflecting. Yeah, man, of course. I've had a tricky uh, upbringing in my early days, and then I've had to get to a point where I've lay laid everything out, got over things, learnt things, mm. and been through that. But to have mates that I'm like, oh, you just uh, you don't overthink things, you don't overcomplicate things. You just got a lovely attitude and vibe, and that's you, Ben, a few others in that. Sec like uh, what do we call it like circle or yeah. click yeah. I'm just like you seem to have it right you seem to not oh, cheers, think too far on things so that's when we're getting into lyrics and stuff I was like I wonder mm. how you do like uh, bring them across so yeah that yeah. was my intersection there is why yeah. I like that about you and it comes across in your lyrics then you're just oh, like nice talk one. about what I know yeah. having a good time cheers <laughs> yeah definitely so you can still listen to a lot of our earlier stuff on SoundCloud and like mm. you, like just type in the Fine Arts Society on SoundCloud. Loads of stuff from like years ago that we don't play anymore, mm, mm. but we never wanted to take down. Like we're not about that. Like as soon as you change direction, like don't delete the past. Like thank so, you, like, man. That's a beautiful there. attitude. Yeah, yeah I like I mean? that. Because then you can see where you've come. It's it's a journey. Isn't Me it? and like, Ben were talking very much about that on the yeah. last podcast and just saying like get it out there, move on, mm. and don't like look back and yeah. only look back in pleasure. Just yeah. go respect. Like that's yeah. what I was saying and thinking and doing at that part of my life. Yeah, exactly. Move on. It's yeah. cool. One of the good things about Facebook and social media in general is that we are literally mapping, well, mm. documenting our mm. entire lives, especially people who are uploading like all the time. I don't really tend to. I don't know. I just don't really feel like I've got anything interesting to say unless <laughs> it's a funny video or a yeah. meme. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm more of an entertainer than like a... I don't know, someone who thinks they deserve a platform that everyone should hear what I want to say. I do it, that in my music, so It's very much as well, uh, it depends what you're after and what you want as an yeah, artist. Yeah, exactly. For yeah. me and Chrissy now, with the old farm buses, uh, trying to spin a few businesses we've got, yeah. we've got to see it in a business aspect. Um, and also, we've got into this thing that, do you know, like scheduling posts? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's done really well for us. Yeah, it's massive. We've spent like two days solid mm getting later um buffer there's one called and create a studio nice but yeah. like yeah every friday every saturday we know when everything's coming out then it's really um, good isn't it? it's a massive load off your mind exactly and people may see it as like oh all they're doing is being on their phones but no we mm. spend like two days in the start of the month on that yeah and then after that we're just refreshing mm. we're doing our life and doing things like this like i think something's yeah. uploading while we're talking now so <laughs> yeah i hope they bring that to instagram soon like it, it, it is on insta yeah definitely uh using like third party plugins though isn't it you've got to like buy i use an app we use a few apps all oh, right yeah. what like free or yeah like free pay? all oh, free right. uh oh, create a studio you can do anything on there nice buffer and later 
anything oh, on there. That. It's really yeah. good, man. Because at the minute, just using the Facebook app, I know that you can like schedule posts yeah, in app. That helps. Like Instagram, you can't. You, uh, you can save yeah. it as a draft, but then you have to physically go back to All it. All sorted for you now, man. After this, well, I'll oh, go and take you through it because uh, it was a massive game changer for us. What yeah, All man. we've done is gone, we use Insta, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah. Boom. We've got three businesses each, like this is one of ours, and then Chris mm. has got Handmade Revolution, I've got Rhythmical Mike. Yeah, man. And we've got all them planned, and we're like, right, Rhythmical Mike, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, I know everything on all platforms, and it's all released and going up. And mm. it, I promise you, I look yeah. forward to showing you, dude. That's epic. <laughs> That's epic. But to make the audience happy, we best get back on track. <laughs> right, crack on. <laughs> <laughs> what thinking, yeah. No, no sidetracking here. Um, where were we? We were towards uh, lyrics because we're getting yeah. to that point. You were talking about things like living, just enjoyment, and yeah. there's Mike, uh, Mikey in the back like, why is life so hard? All <laughs> going down that path. Well, that's sort but, of, like, I, I was writing about breakups as well and like stuff like that. So, yeah, like I think the easiest thing to write about as a songwriter or as a poet, as mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. is like, I don't know, um, not really like negative things, sort of negative things, but like you know, experiences like breakups because they're the like toughest that. things you go through, so it's yeah. where the mind has to work the most. When the mind's having fun and enjoying itself, it can write like I'm young, well, yeah. you done? and you're in a happy place, but yeah, you don't overthink it, do you? You're just having fun, yeah, and you're right. in it. That's when you're going through the hardest part of your life, you're your mind's everywhere and yeah. it's got so much to cling on to. Mm. And if you can write it down, there's so many ways of putting it across, yeah something weird about i can't really like describe why um why i feel the need to you know like write lyrics and sort of put it out there about like not traumatic experiences but you know what i mean just like um i'm struggling to find the right word for it but just stuff that's not like just general everyday yeah, life yeah, yeah. like you know like big momentous occasions that's it yeah yeah that, you know for better or worse like mm-hmm, were, mm-hmm. were terrible at the time you know what i mean like a breakup or you know like losing a loved one or anything like that they are the easiest thing and i've always struggled to like think why i think that way in regards to like lyric writing mm. like why, why do i because um, i did want to go like say you're writing that song about just having a nice time mm. where you make like in between a style stuff and then yeah foot footprints footprints Footpr- yeah. i know i'd get it I, <laughs> I, I love that song writing something like that and writing that yeah how different is the approach how different is the feeling Massive. how much effort do you put into either yeah mm. like writing about like we've got two songs plaything and school days that come to mind they were written in a day mm. and they're about like being a cheeky lad at school you know what i mean like I causing trouble at school yeah. and just like yeah. being out and about blah 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 and then, like, something like Footprints took me, I think, about a year on and off. There you go, man. That's... Not not literally, like, every day. Yeah, like, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I will do nothing else until <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah. But but literally, I, um, I really struggled with it. For some reason, for me, chorus always comes first. Mm. So, um, and it's always got to be catchy. I like that. That's I'm always my about process now. Syllables and, you know catchy melodies mm, sort of thing mm. so like something comes to mind just when i'm walking about it's like mm. that would be a good chorus for a song so then i've got my little starting point there. right it's the whole song then, chorus. Doesn't it? verse massive hurdle for me for mm, some reason okay um just always i don't know um i'm really critical about my lyrics so I've, I'll, I'll start writing something and i've got one part of me that's a bit like oh no one cares about you know like well, look at you pouring your heart out yeah. like what's wrong yeah, with you like yeah. get, get a grip of yourself that sort of toxic masculinity thing of course of course there. we, we yeah. go everywhere <laughs> <this>. <laughs> yeah, all over <laughs> like dominic cummins like, <laughs> <laughs> go wherever he wants he does what he likes he does what he likes <laughs> <laughs> you know that's gonna be a chant at some point <laughs> oh god yeah absolutely but yeah um not to get too political on this let's steer it back to lyrics um yeah I don't know, there's like a little bit of that aspect, but at the same time, recently I've been trying to be less critical and try and, even if, ah, that's the best way to describe it. Like, if I don't initially like a lyric Mm. when I first write it down, I'll just bin it. But I'm starting to try and get into the habit now of not deleting it like Keeping i was saying and like yeah, yeah. Not, not deleting it keep it and then come back to it Play when you're with in like it. a different headspace yeah because yeah. um yeah it's weird you're like super critical mm. of your own words and you start thinking in in ways that you know like no one's gonna judge your song on mm. at all mm. even down to like oh i don't like the word um table i need to use something a little bit more 
with pizzazz about it. And, and pizzazz it was like, is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like no, no one could like just put it out there. But yeah, footprints for me was one of those that I really wanted to get right because the subject matter was so important. Mm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, to touch on it a bit. Uh, I cover uh, the loss of my dad. That was a few years ago. I think yeah. uh, it was like four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'd never really written anything about that. And I thought, like, I've got to you know, yeah. have a song about that. So mainly the end of it, that sort of big build up towards yeah. the end of Footprints, yeah. like, that's like mainly a bit about my dad. And then there's just like, um, I adopted like a new style of writing um, where, and it was inspired by Bruce Springsteen. I read his autobiography. Okay. And instead of writing about himself, he created characters. Characters, yeah. 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 And it's all about, and it's like a really, really simple, like, lesson of writing, like just creating a character and making a story. Yeah, yeah. But it's something I found out really late, and it sort of like I changed did. my Yeah, and I, I felt um, very conflicted because mm. I'd wrote my truth and I'd wrote my stories. Yeah. And then as soon as I went on to trying to tell other people's or go on a another journey that i'd not actually been on mm. it was really tricky for me yeah, i didn't totally. know how to go about it and then I, i'd heard it from a few people saying like just pick some characters write a bit of a story and then mm. try and tell it in poetic form or write it out as spoken word and yeah man absolutely it, it did help like yeah planning and mapping it out and yeah. seeing it as a bit of a, a formula and yeah it, it was interesting i found just writing everything uh helps loads because i did mm. that with footprints i essentially just it was different because i knew exactly what i wanted to write about yeah. Yeah. but at the same time i was a little bit unsure but then i just literally just Perched, wrote, yeah. wrote out like, like a story almost and just paragraph after paragraph of like what i was feeling and what i wanted to convey and then I found that so easy then mm. to condense that into a nice lyrical in, melodic um, form. Creative form writing form. workshops and classes. They call yeah. that a, a free write. Oh, I don't know if you really? heard of one. Yeah, and I found out about it dead I, later I on. I thought there'd be a name for there it. There is, yeah. It, uh, yeah. I love it. I always <laughs> make techniques up and I'm thinking, I found something this, here. This is my thing. This is my thing. This. Yeah, yeah. And then I, oh, <laughs> like, it'll even be the same with philosophy. I think I've come up with like a new way of thinking. And I look at Plato and it's like, oh, God, oh, yeah, he I said guess. it back in BC or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few thousand years later. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> And uh, yeah, what it is, I get the the children to do it in schools. Um, we we'll just say, give them a prompt. Mm-hmm. Uh, what colour is Tuesday? Ah, interesting prompt. That's pretty cool. Orange, blue, red, green. There's a book called The Book of Thunks, which is wrote by a oh, guy um, that I work for. Uh, Ian Gilbert. He's got okay. um, his company's called Independent Thinking, and he just sends people into education. We've got comedians and actors and singers and nice. people that have achieved and he gets them to go and just sh- says there there is another way yeah and teaches that other way for them people at school that were like me and struggled i like that he's yeah. an amazing guy and this book of thunks makes you think that way rather than yeah two or two is four mm. or two or two what else could it be <laughs> and he, he makes them think like that and it's like Boo, okay and yeah it makes you, you think in Gives the gray area the rather than black yeah. and white so it's a gr- uh, just constant questions like that. So mm. I'll ask them these questions and they just go wild. They just write for a whole page and then I'll mm. say something else and they'll write again. And it teaches them to, it's like meditation really. It's just getting it out, purging it out. Yeah, man. Seeing, look at, back at a page and you're like, oh, wow, okay, I've yeah. got something to go from there. So Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a good technique. I think if people could get into free writing who are writers or aspire to be writers, oh, yeah. I think that's a, a good starting point, isn't it? Works for me. If you've got like something to say, if it's coming clearly to mm. you in, in that form, get it all out and then you know cherry pick the best if you if if you have got the constraints of mm. a song let's mm. say you know what i mean like I, I suppose some people would argue that no a song could be whatever you want you know you can make it 10 minutes with like yeah. leonard cohen style <laughs> yeah, like yeah. 11 verses yeah. you know like hallelujah um but really like we're, we're doing this because you know we, we want people to enjoy it yes and yeah. there are certain limiting factors mm-hmm. like and especially like you get the bbc saying oh if you want any chance of being played on the radio it's got to be under three minutes yeah and, yeah yeah you know it's got to be in four four you know no crazy <laughs> time signatures none of this like where are you going two, with three, that get one, back two, to this three, recipe yeah. <laughs> we all know it <laughs> yeah exactly so like you do get mm. them constraints but at the same time i don't know it's just it it, it really helped me it, yeah i i like conversing on you with that and lyrics because i'm the opposite of defense but i 
like that we keep one us like um cross paths because mm. for me I can't just write about the jollies anymore and just like relaxing like making a nice beat and song for somebody I have to think like so many layers from it and, yeah, and go to them depths of myself and it, it's quite exhausting a lot of the time mm. and so I, I've got into music properly now I'd say and I'm yeah, starting man. to really learn it um, yeah. got logic and I'm trying to learn the bits and pieces and put music together no, I love some of your new stuff and, uh, oh, really I'm, I'm, and I've got Ben on the mas- mixing and mastering yeah, which is uh, beautiful yeah. but I, now I'm collaborating I'd love to collaborate with you and I'm working with sick. artists at the minute I'm loving the process but sometimes I'm like they'll put me on a vibe and I, I've got to go really deep into it and it's like, mm. I just want to be able to just do your lyrics now and it, <laughs> it's good to have uh, mentors and different artists you can look at and go okay there's this way of being this way of being and this way yeah, of being yeah that's right totally. so it's yeah. it, lyrics are great and it mm. you know it got me through a lot and now I've got to a certain stage with it I'm like okay what else can lyrics be how else yeah. can it express yourself yeah absolutely. there's so many layers of people aren't there yeah <laughs> One of the biggest like turning points for me in writing was uh, discovering the Gaslight Anthem and uh, the lead singer's Brian Fallon. Oh, yeah, let's start, restart that. I can hey. edit that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cut that out. Anyway, nothing <laughs> happened. But yeah, like one of the big like turning points for me was um, discovering a band called the Gaslight Anthem, mm-hmm. which are essentially like a, a bit of like a punk rock band. Mm. Um, but like as they went on, they started writing more mellow stuff. But the lead singer, Brian Fallon, is my all-time favourite lyricist because mm. i love the the way he projects the lyrics and i love the stuff he writes about it's all very americana he comes mm. from um, mm. red bank new jersey so it's like by the sea living in like really humble like working class sort of like upbringings mm. where like your dad worked in the factories and your mum's worked at like the canteen sort of thing and there's like just the imagery is incredible he talks mm. about like carnivals and uh yeah, you know, the magic of radio, being at home and like listening to the radio, very similar to Bruce Springsteen. Sure. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I think is that like, a big um, inspiration to him? Yeah. yeah, because like they're both from Red Bank, New Jersey, mm-hmm. and they're both such incredible like storytellers, uh, using so few words to tell a massive uh, story and mm-hmm. have it so. Um, open and out there that there'd be like a million different possibilities yes yeah you know, that people can take from those lyrics like just you know simple simple lines that probably mean something completely mundane but everyone's got a different opinion on it they're going to be able to get in on yeah and it's funny at school i that. hated poetry yeah. to, uh, to the core and analyzing it but now getting to that level where i've become that you go into it and you're like, oh my God, look at what I missed out on. I can look back at all these like interesting poems and go, wow, that's an experience. Mm. This is an artist that's been through something and all the metaphor you can pick out and start playing with it. Yeah, man. It's weird that it took that side to me, but I think it was because that's where education falls a little bit. If you yeah. can get the children excited, engaged into it, like... I love poetry now because I've become that. Yeah. Get them creating poems first. Get them becoming poets. And then when you get on to writing about poets and mm. deciphering their messages, they're going to be on it. They're going to yeah, be man. wanting to do it because yeah. they're poets now. Do you know what I mean? I generally mm. think you can literally save someone's life by introducing them to creative writing, mm-hmm, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because like some kids who just don't have an outlet, they yeah. don't know how to express themselves, that can fester and become something really, really serious mm. in later life. Mm. And... Yeah, just introducing kids to that avenue yeah. of just being able to express tell yourself. A story, tell, tell a story. Tell a story. Yeah. Do you. Yeah. yeah. You can definitely, you can 100%. <laughs> lives have been saved yeah. from creative writing and lyrics and music. Too many to mention. <laughs> 100%, man. Yeah, absolutely. C- can we j- jump into your filmmaking as well a little absolutely. bit? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll say how we're doing for time. We oh, right? mate, we can go all day. If you've got all day, <laughs> i got all day. Yeah, to be fair, man. And nothing else. It'll be my, my nan will be watching this by the end, so we'll still have somebody on board. <laughs> Keep it clean then. Yeah. Clean. <laughs> no, it, she, she knows all the swear words. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's sort of like we've got a film ready to be made yeah, in further together. Video. I'm round to get going. I'm, with that I'm again. so ready. We've got, I think, one more day, and then we could be about there, maybe two. We've yeah. probably got a few shoots, but I so. we're there. I, I didn't know this about you. I met you five years ago. We did that mm. really weird gig at yeah, um, the, the Greyhound. Great, it wasn't weird, but I was in a weird space anyway. But right, met but at the yeah. Greyhound. It was cool. And then later on, um, I'm go down my path you've gone down yours mm, yeah and then i 
got into film, like having them done for poetry, I just wanted to document it, put it on YouTube, have imprints of myself, like you're saying before. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I just uh, met Herbie, met um, James Reader, a few mm. great filmmakers, great people. Yeah. And I like working with different people and and going down their paths and, and having that broad spectrum of ideas. Working with other creatives because it brings stuff to the table that. Yeah. You, you can't just get from a one to one with the same person all the time, yeah, having that totally. fresh look on stuff. Yeah, man. So when somebody was like, "Yeah, this guy Matt Turner," it was just it was a ring, and I was like, "Matt Turner, I've seen mm-hmm. him. Look at him on Facebook. Very familiar. He looked like someone." And then it all just clicked, and I was like, "Oh, I bloody, I really like that lad." He was like five years ago. I met him in Derby. He was yeah. like, "Just right, like." I came and said, "Can I do a poem to you?" <laughs> and you were like, "Yeah, mate, crack yeah. on." And you were like, "That's, That's cool. dead sick." And you were really kind to me. And people like you and Ben and on my journey have made me want to carry do it, carry on doing it. So, mm. it was, so I was like, "Let's good, let's man. have him on. Let's yeah. let's." Do a, um, I knew you were good, man. You had like the whole room captivated at that Greyhound open mic, from what I remember. It was, and it's a really weird atmosphere because everyone was there solely to get on at the wine yeah, spot yeah. because it was Paul Heron who yeah. was running it, and he ran the Hog and Barrel stage at the time, <laughs> including us. Like everyone was there, just <laughs> one, like, one purpose. It was like get, it was competition. Get wasn't why it? not? It wasn't an open mic. And it was like a, for me, yeah. like seeing everybody turn up with drum kits and oh, yeah. basses People and went all out. everything and i was like oh i uh, got up and they're like say. where's his guitar and i'm like hello everybody yeah. <laughs> it's really i'm cool, doing though. a poem and it, it, the room was in with me and i really respected it, it yeah a lovely gig for that yeah it was just i didn't think we'd cross paths in such a way again i mean videographers yeah totally videographers. different a totally different life almost didn't so it? yeah after we met at that point were you already doing videography and I didn't know that about no. you? Or when did you get into it? No. And I think I owned a GoPro mm-hmm. five years mm-hmm. ago and I was hoping that that would work for like shooting tour diaries. There was nearly a nice lyric in there. I owned a <laughs> GoPro five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to start freestyling on me. Yeah. That's, that's your like, area, <laughs> mate. <that is. laughs> You can have all this material for free. Yeah, like, later on. I can, I, I can hear the cogs wearing. What does say about like, it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I'd done a little bit. Had no idea how it worked, though. GoPro is basically like... There's a little bit... You, you can get like into advanced mm-hmm. things with it, mm-hmm. but essentially you just point, click, and then... It just, what, whatever then it, it sees, you yeah. see. <laughs> and then it usually looks rubbish unless you're going down a ski slope in the Alps mm-hmm, or doing mm-hmm. something crazy like yeah. surfing or something. Cool. Kayaking or something. So, yeah, that. like I, I was a little bit miffed of like it was all looking really boring because I was just setting a GoPro up and mm. just filming us and expecting it to be like amazing. And I was like, how can I make it look better? And then I slowly started like looking more into it. And then I realized, like, right, okay, if I need. If I need, if I want to make videos that look really good, I need to invest in like a proper interchangeable lens sure, sort of camera. Sure, sure. I got that far, and um, all self-taught, just watching YouTube videos basically, just like, mm. oh, I can, you know, how does this work? How does that work? And then I finally bit the bullet and bought my first camera, which was the Sony A5000, mm-hmm. which is like a popular sort of vlogging camera. Yeah. It's like the cheapest mirrorless that Sony sure. do. It's got the flip-up screen that comes up like. 180 degrees yeah, yeah, so you're meant yeah. to be able to film it like that sort <laughs> yeah. of thing didn't need it for that i basically just wanted like a cheap camera because mm. i wasn't sure if i was going to take to it and around about that point ben had this really cool idea to do these like live sessions because as we were coming up as a band we found it really hard to come across things like you know media or like mm. live sessions or anything that you yeah. could like go turn up get a bit of a video, get some recording mm-hmm. done, and then you'll have something, you know, to show, yeah. like, outside of just going to a recording studio and paying quite a bit. So that then became the pin-up sessions, okay, which yeah. is what we do. I'm hearing the birth of the pin-ups now. Basically, yeah, yeah, to tie them tie both in. And um, it was me, Ben, so Ben was the brainchild of it, mm-hmm. and then I wanted to improve my video stuff. At this point, I had no idea how to use it. I'd only taken a few pictures. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is looking all right. <laughs> There's but a red button. That seems like yeah, that'll that work. Yeah. Yeah. And then a mate of ours, Chris Jones, who still does some filming for us nowadays. He's basically doing like a film and like cinematography course. At I hit that helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. So it was the three of us that started out and uh, we've been like brainstorming all these ideas and we came up with like a mission statement and it was like, right, what we want to do is we want to... Um, 
create these like live sessions and we want to try and make them like for free mm. ideally mm. but like we're going to get to that at yeah. a later stage for now we're going to have to charge just for our time mm -hmm. and like the editing but essentially that's where my video path started pin up sessions yeah pin up sessions yeah, brill and um the, the first one i filmed I had no idea about any of the rules. There's a few little rules, isn't there, yeah. with like filmmaking. Like you don't really go below one over fifty shutter yeah, speed. Okay. A lot of people won't understand this. Yeah, yeah. But the like, technical is good though. Yeah, if there are. <laughs> if you go below one over fifty shutter speed, then uh, your images will start being blurry. Yeah, and it'll look we've a bit weird. <laughs> Can be cool, like creative vibe. Mm -hmm. If you want to make like a cool. Didn't they creative? used it in a Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Do you know when it's going the scene where? Oh, the shell shot. Yes. Is that what they did? Yeah. The, nice. the shutter speed and they're just going all over the if shot. If ever shoot a war film. Yeah, yeah. Like, like shell shots. <laughs> I think we could get into one that. We could do one about COVID, can't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just us sat around a bus like what the fuck's going yeah. on <laughs> everything around us going to fast <laughs> <laughs> and yeah like I started to like learn some of the rules then because I was like shooting and I was experimenting with lighting and we were using like staged really powerful mm. like you know that you put gels in like what are they, the old bulbs like phosphorescent like, yeah. they're really powerful ones oh that, and then they that do literally blow your electrics when there's okay, a little pole get, with yeah. them like full on stage lights yeah, oh, yeah, right. just set up on like a rickety pole rig <laughs> lighting these bands like they give off full on loads of heat and they're in the room like mm. <laughs> and they were like massively overexposed you go back to the very first ones it was a band called Rex mm. R E Q S. I think there's still a band that are going. I think they've just brought a song out actually. Awesome. Yeah, yeah and uh, they were the first ever pin up sessions. You can find them on uh, Ben's I've, YouTube. I have gone back through your catalogue to be seen fair. Them. So I may yeah. have seen them there. Um, I must have because I've yeah. seen a lot of them. How many pin ups do you think there are now? Oh, God. Well over 20. Yeah. Easily. Because we did five videos for them. I was gonna, I was expecting you to go, oh, God, well over like 300. Oh, no, went, no. Well, God, well over 20. But um, yeah, that is quite a lot. It is in about that. Retrospective, yeah. like putting on the nights and all the effort it takes. Yeah. With film, when you make a mistake in film, though, mm. oh, fools, it can yeah. literally be a whole day ruined, can't yeah, it? Yeah, totally. Shot in the wrong, like you say, shutter speed. ISO's gone wrong. We're saying all these increments oh, now. Yeah, but have you had that, that happen? Have yeah, had... quite quite a few times. To be fair, when I first started off, um, the videos looked sound for what for the level that we were at. Yeah. If anything, we were like really impressed with them. Like, oh, it's amazing. Looking back now, be a bit like, yeah, it's a bit grain or yeah, yeah, certain bit, things. Bit grain, just 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 a bit weird. Like weird color grading. No yeah, idea yeah, how yeah. to color stuff. So like. Yeah, I just didn't know what I was on, doing with that. that on. I'm like, sure it'd be sl great. Slightly yellow or slightly <laughs> red skin. I've just been uh, like, are those guys ill? <laughs> yeah, it's like that's not what people look like in real life. Like, they look like a weird, you know, pop art. Yeah, sort of thing. yeah. But um, oh, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, like mistakes. There was quite a few. Like, uh, I lent my camera to a guy called Sam Naherney, mm -hmm. who does this like really. Um, Cool. Well, he, he basically like runs music, mm. which is like you know, supporting knots musicians. And uh, I lent my camera and he did this really cool thing where he faked a log profile because my Sony A7 doesn't use it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it was really cool. And I was getting some really good shots. I was like, thanks so much for doing that. But then if you're faking a log profile, if you're shooting like a high contrast scene mm. where you want loads of really dark darks and yeah. really bright highlights, that's not what you want because... <laughs> You're essentially by creating a log, yeah. you're like you're boosting the shadows Get, and you're yeah. bringing the highlights down. Yeah, aren't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. So uh, I didn't realise that, and we shot a pin-up session, and uh, I gave it to Rob, and it was grainy as oh, oh. and it yeah. was really dark yeah. anyway. But the fact that Rob just couldn't do anything with it because, like, yeah, it, well, if it you just put it on to right. Final Cut or something, and you, you've already got grain. Yeah, whatever you do in Final Cut's just gonna amplify that grain yeah, basically. a lot of the time. You can sometimes, yeah. but so you... that wasn't bad. Like it, it was okay. It, it, it was you know like one of those that like people who weren't really into it mm, would mm. you know would like notice, but just a bit like oh, you know whatever. But like for me, that was like ah oh, messed that up. That could have yeah. looked so much better. And like, I took it quite hard, and I was like right, I need to sort that out. So then I went on another YouTube journey mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. found out like, oh, okay, so I'll use this like log profile when I'm shooting like other stuff, but like change your camera settings. Yeah, basically, like, mm. So learned from that and like changed it. Anything else? I don't think there's anything really too bad. I've not had like any like files going missing. <laughs> Man, I've had too many times. Yeah, man, it's yeah, just you've like been dead unlucky. Learn all the time though, but. After doing it three or four times, you're like, come on, mm. you, you've got to get on top of this. Uh, my, my ones are mainly like um, sh shooting in certain lighting. 
yeah. uh, like fluorescent and not setting my camera shutter speed up to the lighting so oh, I get like yeah. banding and I was lucky I learned that pretty early, early yeah honest, and yeah. I did that a couple of times and I just again a bit perfectionist with it I won't I just can't use them shot even if it's light and you think you've mm. got it I just can't do it yeah I know what you mean I've, again yeah. there's a setting on uh, the GH5 where you can film in slow-mo really nicely it's got mm. a lovely slow-mo shot That's I've cool. done like ones where I'm trying to sync people up and oh, I've yeah, just yeah. forgot to turn it round. Just the, just turn the knob around, yeah. and uh, they're all in slow mo, and they're trying to lip sync. And I'm like, I don't think I can save that. Maybe yeah. I could. Maybe you know now. I've been I've been experimenting with that actually. Yeah, I've done one like that, and I've got an idea that uh, I'm going to be shooting with Miles Knight. Okay. I think oh, I told yeah, you he's about. coming on here as well. Is he? So yeah, he's lovely. Really cool guy. But yeah, we've we've got an idea for a music video. Never got round to filming it because covid messed yeah, us yeah. up but it was it was out there like to be fair your video mm. that we're filming is pretty out I there i can't wait I've, I've yeah got, like i've properly planned it out like i've never i done love that the um direction we've gone with that though now mm. i've tried to implement it a bit and i'm doing my own films now with yeah, chrissy man. i've just got her filming me as well yeah uh, and editing it and we will we'll we'll go and do a scene mm. and go back put it on have something to eat yeah. talk about it and go and do something else yeah it, man yeah instead of thinking right we've got this amount of allotted time we've got to yeah. get everything out today let's do it it's been really nice to just go let's do mm. it as a process oh yeah allocating the time that's when like your best work comes out oh about. totally Cause it's quite a lot like we're, we're limited at our level like when it comes especially with, like bands and stuff like bands aren't earning mega money that mm. like we're working with so like you can't expect them to like come to you and say like we want a music video and then you go like all right we're going to um we need to allocate so many days. It's going to cost you like yeah. this crazy amount. Most bands want like a music video doing in a day. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, set price. Yeah. Here's what you'd get. Yeah, in sort for of this. thing. Like, yeah. like standard. Like you know, like I, I always keep my prices fairly low because mm, mm. I don't know. We're all, just, we're all musicians in the yeah, same exactly. boat. Yeah, exactly. And like I, I can't justify charging like silly money. Yeah, like a yeah. lot of you know like videographers or creators like do charge when. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just mean, can't, can't just it's, it. <laughs> sometimes. Again, it's horses for courses. Yeah. And that you've got to put a price on that you value yourself. Mm. And, you know, that's a thousand pound camera. That's five or six hundred pound camera. Yeah, that, true, you're right. We, we have got all these expenditures out. So yeah. they're, they're paying for your equipment, they're paying for your time, they're paying for your knowledge. Yeah, like, exactly. You've got to price tag yourself enough to go, I'm worth this. Yeah. And it is a specialised skill. But I do know people that try and make struggling artists yeah. who deserve a video and, and, and make them pay a corporate price. Yeah, And yeah. that's, you know... Just be human. Just yeah, exactly. Think about the situation. Think about the client. Think about where you're yeah. at and, and what they can do. Yeah, and that's, that's why, why I'm generally thinking of like adopting what we've been doing, filming your video. Just like not, you know, just like having the I don't know how how we're doing it. We just got like a fixed price rate mm -hmm. and just taking our time. So instead mm. of trying to blat it out yeah. all in one day, just like span it out over several days when it works for us. And we're just going to end up with, like, mm. just as good a product. Exactly what we want, though, as yeah. well. Like, yeah, you can exactly. look back at it and go, yeah. this is bit needs tweaking or anything like that. Is yeah, it, I'm, exactly. I'm really happy about that process with you. Yeah, man. Are you, you going to try and stick down the music avenue with it, or do you really like the idea of I've, going in lots of different areas with it? To be it? honest, I have been branching out a little bit, yeah. Like, I've done a few um, for Beat the Streets. I did a couple of, like, charity videos, mm. like, because mm. Beat the Streets wanted to convey, the you know, the the charities that are actually benefiting from the from the festival sort yeah. of thing so like, i did a few like interview style things and I quite, I quite enjoyed them interviews are pretty cool what else have i done that's different um been meaning to do something with rob the drummer from tfas mm -hmm. and also herbie yeah uh, rob wants to do like a documentary on oh, something that's like quite personal to him and uh it's something that we keep going on about like it's gonna be amazing but yeah like a full-on yes know, like, yeah feature length documentary sort of oh, thing how, really how cool. long would you say what, about an hour long documentary? yeah i reckon so yeah brilliant like, that'd be amazing a full-on like journey that. you know what i mean like going through. i did um a documentary my stuff's on a uh, youtube i'll just mm. do it for like a cv point i don't like promote it too much but mine is a camera mic 
attraction. Yeah, man. Yeah. And it's on my YouTube. But I did a documentary for the unit, which is ra- a raving scene. Ah, and nice. uh, That's cool. it's a really interesting underground um, yeah. documentary. The guy Shane who asked me to do it and met him at this rave. Yeah, was so invested. He had such passion in the rave scene and this culture. It was amazing mm. to be a part of, and it's split with like you get proper images from like the 2002 party they had at the start and all the new images that I got to take. And then we actually have Shane do a a talk about it, which is really cool. But the guy who owns their unit and owns the place that they rent it off, is this like million or maybe probably a billion? I don't know. He's got a lot of money. (laughs) But is is this really like, again, what's the word? Wisdom, full character, like wisdom... Uh, He's just a wise character. Wise uh, character. There, there is a word, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> wisdomful. Um, <laughs> He's very wisdomful. He, he uh, looks like the naughty professor. Honestly, nice. <laughs> I went to his like, eighty-year-old bloke. So many stories <laughs> in in the top of it, living in this castle. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm doing a rave documentary. We drove into this dingy little club. There's like fuck you on the walls <laughs> and crazy stuff trippy faces and That's then you cool. drive to this like estate and i'm talking to this guy and he says yes um when shane came and approached me i knew exactly what he wanted oh yeah put on your business it, uh, it, he, course, yeah. he, he goes uh yes uh, i used to be in the rave scene back in the day and uh, we just Don't couldn't you know? believe it and it was the, i i, I was loved mental. doing that documentary I, I got home i was on it for like three days but like didn't sleep and mm. it was so interesting yeah, and man. i like seeing that like side of people so starting yeah. out in music videos cool and yeah. then you're like oh what about this this yeah. and this and this so. music videos i'm most comfortable with that's mm. what i've like started off that, that's what i know the best i know what looks good i've got a lot of like good ideas mm. with music videos but yeah like i've been branching out a little bit i've done a few like adverts like promos uh, there's a company called tropical that are like two lads from nottingham who've Legends. basically made their own tiki bar i think i referred oh, you okay. like, ages ago and uh, they're really cool and they've been like having me do loads of like promos for them and the most recent one i'm really proud of they like teamed up with donuts and they made this thing called like a hard shake which is essentially a milkshake that's got like rum and all sorts of oh it. and lads. it's basically just topped with a donut oh it's like, lads rum okay. and chocolate ice cream are and, you like, sure chocolate we've got to be in this corona world or can we just Tone get like back that. to having a what are they called hard shakes hard shakes yeah, yeah man. really Beautiful. cool it's like an american thing but like all about it yeah it, and that, that 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 was really cool and just the way it went that was like really rushed that was like right i've got this collab with donuts mm. but i need it out like in two days time mm. would you be able to come and shoot it and then have it ready for the day after and i was like <laughs> jesus man all right sure yeah. about that i was like i'll give it a go yeah right, let's see how it goes and to be fair i don't know it's just perfect the set was perfect filmed it at junkyard mm-hmm. like a really mm-hmm. trendy cool like bar in nottingham had a wicked like wood sort of like pallet wood background uh it, it just looked like a tv set it was amazing mm. and uh we just basically just did like a step by step, you know, like loads of really quirky like camera angles and like him sort of like pouring um, the chocolate liqueur for, in. For a filmmaker, like you, it's like fifty percent setting, isn't it? If you yeah, get the perfect setting and, and you've got the right camera equipment and knowledge, yeah. Oh, there's no bigger pleasure, is there? You're like, I'm in yeah. the best place for 100%, this. Hundred percent. But mm. yeah, but then I've had like on the opposite, I've like tried to do some like promos for um, some bars. I won't name them, but like the kitchen was just a bit like dingy yeah and yeah. you just no matter what angle Polish you went tip. from <laughs> yeah literally like you just couldn't make it look good and in Get the you. end like they ended up just like not using them really which is like a bit like disheartening because i was mm. actually genuinely proud i thought mm. i did really good with what i had yes yeah um and for me i always sort of like try and see the best in it it's like okay so like the background's not very good it's like a really gray uh-huh, uh-huh. quite dull all the pots are really like scratched and banged. Mm, like, mm, it was yeah. a kitchen that was heavily used it wasn't mm. a show kitchen like on jamie oliver or any of the mm. cooking programs where it's all pristine and like really nice it it was, yeah, a heavy kitchen. It was clean, but it didn't look clean. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, did, I think it might, that might be a, a, an interesting thing for you to uh, look into. That on this uh, YouTube site, mm. uh, YouTube, the YouTube site, I sound <laughs> like my grandma. On the YouTube. And <laughs> um, I follow this guy, a YouTube page, so it's an artist yeah, yeah. that I follow. Channel. That's better, channel. That's Come on, mate. words. Come We've been on, doing mate. them all day. <laughs> 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 so we're on this channel and basically put a competition out. Mm. and his competition is this little film five minute film one Mm. but you've got to do your most boring room you've got and you've got to turn it into like a 
an action or a thriller or a horror oh, cool. and you've got to make the shots and the scenes as intense and as mm. pa- impactful as they can be yeah man and uh, i tried it out in my bedroom because it's pretty boring now we've got the baby room coming <laughs> oh of <laughs> so, course congratulations yeah. I thank you forgot. man thank oh, you sorry, man. we're getting there we're ready <laughs> that's amazing what incredible news <laughs> thank you dude oh, but probably. yeah we've got all these uh we, we took all my old pictures down that was quite a moment yeah but of course, it's all for course, the bigger yeah. bigger purpose oh i need to tell uh, chris chrissy right? <laughs> yeah. like, congratulations no idea why she's looking bigger today oh but it's bless great her. i remember I remember seeing your post and being like, oh, that's amazing. And then, yeah, for some reason, so much has happened yeah, since then. Yeah, man, I c- couldn't believe compute. it myself. I've had a lot of love and support, that's which has amazing. been beautiful. Yeah. So we did that's it in this room point. where we took everything down. It's just a white room. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you posted it on and the guy, we got a really good response from him. We tried to do like really like close-up action shots of like hands moving, yeah, intense cool. noise. and. Wasn't it Peter was... McKinnon, was it? It wasn't. No. Pete... No, no. I'm saying he does like little challenges Similar like that. Similar things like it? that. Yeah, that's cool, though. So I've just seen my cameras getting close to running out oh, over battery. here. Battery yeah. Wise, yeah. But I mean, we've been going on some time. I Would you be up for coming back and doing one of these? Because I think Absolutely. there's a, a lot of avenues we could go down. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind just talking about pin-up media really That's quick, what I want. I was just before yeah, going to yeah. go, going to say, Matt, where can people find you? What projects are you doing? Because mm. we don't need to see me anymore for this bit. So. Oh, <laughs> down that goes. Yeah, tell anybody what, what they can find you on. Mm. Uh, basically you can find uh, my band the Fine Art Society on uh, Facebook and Instagram just type in TFAS Band or the Fine Art mm-hmm. Society mm. and you can find us on there uh, for all my video stuff me, Ben and Rob decided to like group together and create pinup media so that's essentially going to be our outlet for all of the sort of like creative things that we've been doing mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. going to be like showcasing all of like the promo videos that we do and we've also started like becoming youtubers in a sense and we're doing like help and advice videos on our pinup media channel mm-hmm. stuff like mainly to do with music i've been keeping up with all of it and nice it, one. it yeah. really is i'm really enjoying helpful it. <laughs> like yeah, a bit absolutely like, you put it out so nicely as well. I'm investing in the characters. Maybe I've got a bias because I'm your friend. <laughs> but yeah, I listen to it. It's it's direct. You're doing it perf- Like, But you've got a humbleness and a nice That's attitude, one, yeah. a real attitude about you. It's we lovely. just wanted like to, you know, showcase what we do but also help people mm, out as mm, well mm. so that's the reason why i've been doing like the youtube stuff like mainly because of coronavirus as well like i wanted to start doing like a youtube series showing people how to like do various things in music sure but there was so much going on but now it went up so much time mm-hmm, you know when mm-hmm. this like, whole thing happened that like yeah i just thought like yeah let's let's do it and it's, it's doing really well to be honest and then remind me after this chat we have and, and the, let me show you the scheduling and everything on the laptops because mm. that will oh, help yeah. you a lot in That'd this be massive. pinup because yeah. uh, you can have it, all your social medias done and dusted and set for the month in mm. a day or two days and anybody else if you're listening to this still on so I can say this uh, <laughs> get in touch I think that's a good you should do a pinup on scheduling that'd be good yeah absolutely. that'd be cool yeah when you <laughs> when that's i was a, showing you idea. it'd yeah. be a really good one because yeah. as an artist you know mental health constantly being on top of it constantly checking out what's going on mm. i've got to do my post have i done a post today what yeah. if i do if you can just get it done in two days yeah. all of them it's less overwhelming it's so yeah and done. you can focus your energy in so many other avenues yeah it's been a game changer yeah. for us we've got loads coming just done one on music distributors which mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. massive i went full on down the rabbit yeah, hole for that yeah. that is a big thing like you've it got is. stuff on spotify and stuff haven't yeah you? i use a uh, distort yeah. kids oh distro kids distro yeah, kids yeah. sorry distro kid for that but for spreaker and podcast it's totally different yeah you of course use, um, yeah uh, yeah, Spreaker is the platform you use for that. Nice. So. Yeah, I don't say I basically just made like a video comparing all of them. Awesome. And it was long. Which is the them. best then in your eyes? What, uh, uh, for us, it depends on what you want really. But okay. like for us, like we don't we don't churn much music out. But um, so f- yeah, basically, like f- for us, it was Lander. Yeah, uh, yeah, which I've is heard a weird of that one because well. they're like a mastering software. Mm. Lander essentially yeah, uses AI uh, to master Charlie was talking tunes. about it the other yeah, day. Yeah, like, and they've just started doing like distribution, but it was really good. It was like for a maximum of ten tracks, it was like twelve quid, and then you get like free youtube monetization oh. and like all sorts of stuff amazing stuff that i didn't even realize myself it's like a learning curve for me which is like the reason why i'm doing it mainly because i want to oh, there it is. There gone. time up <laughs> no no keep going man. You're, you're on <laughs> no worries but yeah like um i like doing it because it's a learning curve for me i'm learning how to do this stuff it's like all oh, right okay 
and then I can help other people as well. Mm, like, instead mm. of just like, you know, learning myself and going like, right, forget you guys. I'm, you know, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm better clued up now. So forget all you lot. Like, like, I want to be like all my mates. Come on, come on. Like this is. I l- <laughs> love that attitude and personality and knowing we're, we're all just always learning. Mm. I, I started a company like a few years ago with yes men who and I, I knew it wasn't going to accumulate quite yeah, and I yeah. was that as well like we we're all sort of like big, big ideas but mm. I sort of felt we probably weren't going to go down that path we've all gone to do our, our own things and done it successfully yeah we called it a from scratch production oh yeah but yeah it was with trying stuff out just from the bottom mm. because that's where we began and then people don't even know how to start up a Facebook page or don't even know how to start up a, oh, yeah, a YouTube channel and start yeah. I, I like your approach you've gone back to down here like yeah man try this out then come here then come here and it's levels yeah. it's levels and yeah that's right you're learning from your experiences it's mm. uh, it's so good to watch man nice you one put it out perfectly no cheers appreciate it matt the time is here Time's the here. time is near oh, um sorry i'll throw one more sorry link matt out. no jump no, no, in right. sorry no, no. one more link if you want to find pinup media uh have a look <laughs> at that just type in pinup media on facebook and we're also on instagram at pinup media and yeah. Matt, you're coming back to do another session when 100%. I've got more batteries, more yeah. charge. Sort you out with a dummy battery. Oh. That's what you need, mate. That's yes, a new, I only just bought one last week. Essentially a battery that plugs into the mains. Oh. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, God. They're Matt. Like 30, 30 quid. I'm That's it. I'm, <laughs> I'm away then, guys. You're never going to shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited <laughs> it, hours on it's the It's good, though, because we found... Do you know how Chrissy makes them dolls? Yeah, um, they're cool. I put a little... Every here's time... It, yeah, here's the little guy. <laughs> Every time uh, it cuts out, <laughs> just to, to be shown, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's on uh, Matt's shoulder as a here's little your, parrot Charlie. <laughs> here's your thumbnail. Have you got yours? Oh, uh, mine's inside. Oh, inside. Yeah, it's doing its own little job say, today. Yeah, like, a little pal. <laughs> could have taken like a little... Uh... <laughs> but it is good. I've got these now. So every time it cuts out, and this is what you'll be watching now if you're watching it on YouTube, there's a little Mikey waving his arms around just going, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, thank you for joining in the podcast thank you for being on this journey the old farm bus back of the bus sessions i'm going to keep learning i'm going to keep growing and meeting great people like matt turner you know where to find him i'll put them links up and uh i'll put them in the description thank you so much big love everybody peace out cheers man